Amen. I'm glad you're here in church this morning. Amen. How long you felt that God is adding things to you this morning? I believe that. That's been a theme for the whole morning and even the whole day. God adding strength to those who are weary, those who are tired. He gives you strength this morning. Amen. I'm glad I'm here. Tell your neighbor right now, I'm glad you are here. And you may be seated. Thank you for being the house of God. Thank you guys for leading us in worship. To those who are our volunteers who are, you know, serving, serving in different capacities. Thank you for being here. Thank you for serving. We worship the God who is worthy of praise. Amen. Amen. Are you ready for God's Word? Amen. In the past few weeks, we've been talking about good plans. Well, you know, God has good plans. God says that He began a good work for us. He's the one who's going to fulfill it. So there are good plans, good things that He has prepared for us. And it is His will that you and I walk in the things that God has prepared for you and me. There is a plan. But it's not overnight that it's going to happen. Amen. There's a promise of God. You're holding on to a promise. But we know there are times of waiting. And most of the time, we are in the process of waiting than us receiving. But it's good because more than the thing that He wants to give to you, it's who you are becoming in the waiting. Wait on the Lord, right? As we wait on the Lord, things are being strengthened. Things are being added. Remember, you know, the, the analogy of the rope, the example of the rope. You know, many strands are being intertwined. We're being intertwined with God. Things are being added to us. I love it when God adds. It's permanent. He think, and so as we wait on Him, things are being added to us that is being built inside of us so that we can handle what's going to come. That we can handle the promise that God has for you. When God promises, He will fulfill it. Amen. Amen. But we need to see things differently. We need to know things differently. We need to walk in a manner that is worthy of God so that we can handle what is coming. And as we wait on God, things are being added. And one of the big ways or one of the big things that God adds to your life is what? Godly relationships. Amen. That is why today, this is our Life Group Sundays. That's why all of us are wearing this shirt. Be connected. It's so important that we are connected. Amen. As we wait on the Lord, He adds the right relationships. The godly relationships that God has for us. Do you know that in every season, God adds godly relationships to you? I've seen that in my life. There are uh, relationships that are just for that season, but there are relationships that are for life. But regardless, all of that, when we recognize it, all right, we invest in it, we sow towards it, we benefit from the godly relationships that God has brought in our lives. Amen. Just like Lego. Among you like Lego? Among you played with Lego? Maybe your son, your daughter have played with Lego. In and by themselves, Lego blocks don't mean much. Look at the picture. All right? Lego blocks don't mean much. In and of itself, it's like pointless. It's useless. But they were designed to be connected. They were designed to be connected. What they say that every Lego has a protruding interlocking stud mechanism. All right? It is the stud that allows Lego blocks to connect with one another. Regardless of the color, the size, the shape, or the number of studs, all Lego blocks have one function, to get connected. And only when they are connected, they will fulfill their true purpose. Can we see a picture of Legos that are connected? Look at that. It's a whole city. All right? Whole city. So what happens when you get connected? You fulfill your purpose. Do you know that the church, you and I, are like Legos? You know, God brought you here to be, not to stand alone, because stand alone, you can, it's pointless to stand alone. But God brought you to a specific place for a season, for a purpose, to be connected so that we can fulfill something for that season and even touch the generation and even leave a legacy. All right, like Lego blocks, you know, some of us may have two, may have four, or may have six or eight or even 12. 
12 studs or gifts or, or what, whatever that we carry. But then again, it's not about the color. It's not about the shape. It's not even the numbers. It is about being connected. First to Jesus. Amen. The common denominator that we have is Jesus Christ. And He connects us to Himself. And because of that, we're part of one family. And we know we're one in Him. Because if you want to finish your race, you cannot finish your race alone. You need one another. Amen. You need somebody. Amen. Just call my name. I'll be there. We need one another. Right? We need one another because we need godly relationships in our lives. Thus, we have life groups. Life groups is not just a ministry. It is who we are as a church. Amen. It is who we are as a church. 1 Corinthians 12, 24 to 27. But God has so composed the body, giving greater honor to the part that lacked it. All right? So I love that. Giving greater honor to the part that lacked it. Verse 27, uh, 25, that there may be no division in the body, but that members may have the same care for one another. And if one member suffers, all suffer together. All right? So if one member suffers, one suffer, all suffer together. Just like, for example, you have a toothache. All body, all of your body suffers together. All right? Amen. But also, if one member is honored, all rejoice together. That's why when someone gets blessed, all right, your attitude should be not, not like this. Why did he get blessed? Not me. Lord, I've been serving you for a long time. No, your attitude should be, if he got blessed, I'm next. I'm next because I'm part of the body. If there is something happening, you know, that is good in one part, that's me. I'm part of it. So that means I can expect the good things that God has for me. Can someone say amen? amen. Because we are a family. Amen. We're part of a body. And then verse 27, now you are the body of Christ in, and individually members of it. In the Amplified, now you collectively are Christ's body. We are Christ's body, all right? And individually, you are members of it, each with its own special purpose and function. So you have a function, you have a purpose. I have a function, I have a purpose. God brings us together for this season here at 2023. God brought you to new life. I'm here in new life. You're here in new life. So there is a purpose why God brings us together. More than the physical alignment, more than the physical relationship, there are spiritual things that needs to be done. That's why it's so important that we be connected. Amen. It's so important that we be connected. What are the benefits of belonging to a life group? Number one, life group makes church personal. Amen. Church should be big enough to celebrate, but small enough to care. The bigger the church, the smaller it should be. Because imagine, all of us ministers, we want to minister to everybody. But we cannot. It's so impossible. It's so impossible. Just like this week, we had one wedding, two, two baby dedication. Imagine in a week, you know, it's like it's so impossible to meet everyone but then again, that's why there are extensions to this grace. We have life group leaders. We have people who are volunteering to help, care, to add, to, to counsel, to pray. Amen? That is why we're all here to add and care for one another. Because God wants for you to be heard. God wants for each and every one to be touched and to be, to be ministered to. And that is why grouping structure like this is so important in a growing church. It's easy to get lost in a crowd. It's easy to get lost up there. Right? It's easy to get lost, you know, at the back. But then again, you come, you come here because there is a reason why you're here. And God wants you to be connected. We may be receiving great teachings on a Sunday. Are you receiving great teachings on a Sunday? Yes, but it is also in the life groups that we process these things. We talk about this. It becomes personal. We share your takeaways. Imagine all of us, if I pass the mic, ask your takeaways, we'll be here the whole day. It's so impossible. 
But then again, in a life group setting of three, four, five, we can over a cup of tea because I don't drink coffee. All right. So a cup of tea. I promote coffee, uh, not coffee, tea culture here in this house. Some people promote coffee. But no, for us, we, a cup of tea, we talk about it. You know, we become personal. We pray for one another. We help one another. We add to one another. Amen. And also life group. Life groups are not Bible studies. That you come in prepared with three points. No, no, no. These are just places for us to... It's bite-sized. What you've learned last Sunday, you come to a life group, you share your heart. This is my takeaway because of my situation. And we listen and then we pray for one another. We help one another. So this is life group, doing life together. And aren't you glad here in New Life, life groups are not just... A group of people come together in a set place. You can do anything with your life groups as long as they permit, okay? You can you bike together. You can eat together. You, among you like Korean food, all right? So you can have a Korean food life group. Among you like binging in Netflix, Korean drama, you can have Korean drama life group. Some people here, they're, they like golf. So some people have a golf life group. All right, I, I saw the circles that we have on volleyball. So they have volleyball, badminton, basketball, whatever, uh, sewing, uh, knitting, knitting, whatever. We can come together, whatever we're doing, we're having fun, but we are adding to one another. That is life group, being personal. Amen, being personal. And what leads to us being personal? What happens is we grow together. But let me go back to being personal. I remember Zacchaeus, all right? Jesus told Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus, I'm going to go down, all right? I'm going to go to your, to your house today. Let's follow this in verse 5. When Jesus came by, he looked up at Zacchaeus and called him by name Zacchaeus. He said, quick, come down. I must be a guest in your home today. Aren't you glad Jesus is personal? Amen. Zacchaeus quickly climbed down and took Jesus to his house in great excitement and joy. Now, let me say this. Zacchaeus just, is just like us. We are low in stature, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We cannot reach God even though we go up the ladder or the tree of religion. We cannot reach God. But God made a way at the cross so that you and I could have an invitation for Jesus to come to our house. Amen. He opened the way so that we can have a relationship with Him. So just like Zacchaeus, Jesus invited Himself to the house of Zacchaeus. Isn't that cool? All right. So He went, Jesus went, and then verse 7, but the people were displeased. He has gone to be the guest of a, of a notorious sinner. They grumbled. And meanwhile, Zacchaeus stood before the Lord and said, look at what happened here. I will give half of my wealth to the poor, Lord, and if I have cheated people on their taxes, I will give them back four times as much. Now think about it, what happened here? Because of an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ in a small group setting, in His house, Jesus didn't even preach. We don't see that in, in, the, in the Bible, but because of the encounter that they had, among, you know, in life groups, you can have an encounter, Amen. As long as Jesus is in the center, all right, you can have an encounter. And what will happen? There will be transformation. Amen. I speak that to you. I speak that to your workplace. I speak that to your families. Amen. Look at what happened to Zacchaeus. He said, I will give half of my wealth to the poor. Wow. Amen. And then if I have cheated people on their taxes, I will give them back four times as much. Among you want that to happen in the governments of the world. Amen, of the world, that, of the world. Not only in the Philippines, but all around the world. Really, amen. Jesus, when Jesus comes, and in this scenario, in this environment, in this small setting, people can have an encounter. You can have an encounter in a large setting like this, but definitely you can have an encounter in the small settings. Amen, because Jesus is in the house. Amen. So as life group, as we desire that, transformation can happen, all right? And then it's a place to grow. It's a place wherein you find yourself in a journey of growth. Here in New Life, we have a journey 
for all of us who wants, for all of you to get connected and you, it's our desire that you grow. That the person that came here a couple of months ago, when you look back at your life, you're going to see, I praise God that I'm changed and I, I grew. Amen. Because God did not design you to remain dormant, to be the same. He desires for you to grow. You know, and in the church, we have a way and a system. I love systems. I love structures. A structure that is designed to help people grow from link class to immerse class to flourish class and even to empower class. It's a place for you to grow. And the setting can be, you know, through life groups that life groups can be encouraged, you know, to be an encouragement or to, to be a place of encouragement for people to grow. Amen? Number three. Oh, before that, let's go to 2 Timothy 4.19. Okay, number three, life group provides the best opportunity for one anothering. One anothering. The phrase one another was mentioned more than a hundred times in the Bible. And this is the basis for true community. All right, one anothering. In a life group, we're given first-hand opportunity to journey with others. Among, you know, godly relationship is so important in our lives. It must be. Look at 2 Timothy 4.19 to 22. Okay? Life happens, so it's so important that we are connected to people who can add faith to us, who will tell us not to quit in the waiting seasons, who will remind us that God is good no matter what. Among you need friends like that. Amen. I pray that you are also a friend like that. All right? That I'm just a text away. I'm a call away. Or I can call. When I, whenever I'm led, you know, there are times when I remember somebody or a couple, I give them a text. I give them a call. You know, because we have a connection. They know my number. I know their number. So because of that connection, we can allow the Holy Spirit to work in our lives. 2 Timothy 4.19. Okay? To verse 22. And this book is the... Many scholars believe that this is the last book wherein uh, Paul, uh, Paul wrote, okay? This is the last book that Paul wrote, and he was getting ready to die, all right? And so 2 Timothy, if you look at the heading, it's Paul's final greetings. Verse 19, give my greetings to Priscilla and Aquila and those living in the household of uh, Onesiphorus, Onesiphorus, okay? Verse 20, Erastus stayed at Corinth, and I left Tromphinum, Tromphimus, sick at Miletus. What names, right? All right. Do your best to get here before winter. Eubulus sends you greetings, and so do, so do Pudens, Linus, Claudia, and all the brothers and sisters. And may the Lord be with your spirit, and may His grace be with you all. Why did the Holy Spirit enter that? entered the names of those people even so hard to pronounce. All right? Like Onesophorus, Tromphemus, just like Optimus Prime, something like that. Do your best to get here before winter. Because he was highlighting the relationships that Paul had. Even at his last final days, he was greeting people who were in his godly, you know, his relationship. Amen. He was talking about his godly relationships. And during winter, in all seasons of life, God gives us relationships to help us grow and navigate every season. You cannot do life alone. We need godly relationships. It's so fitting. It's just so, it's so sobering that at the end of Paul's life, he was calling his friends. He was calling his friends during even winter. All right, are you in winter? Are you in a, in a place of struggle? Are you in a place of deadness? You could, it's like nothing's happening. You're in that waiting season. All right, let me ask you a question. Who are your Eubulus? Who are your Pudens? Who are your Claudia? Who are your Priscilla and Aquila? Who are your Optimus Primes? <laughs> Who are these people that you can call, call on, just call my name, right? I'll be there. Call on that you know because of a relationship that you have with them, whatever season, mountaintop experiences or even valley experiences, they will be there for you. 
These are godly relationships. Amen? So these are value. That's why it's so important we understand who these people are. We recognize them. And not only recognize them, that we protect the relationships. Not only protect, but invest in these relationships and sow towards this relationship. Because I tell you, there's power in relationships. Power in relationships, power in community, power in being connected. Someone said, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Right? For breakthroughs. Among you, desire for breakthroughs. All of us have breakthroughs lined up for each and every one of us. But God will use people to help us get into the breakthroughs. Amen. God will use godly relationship not only to help us get into the breakthroughs, but also breakthroughs don't often last, but there will be a community or a group of friends ready to sustain it. When breakthroughs come, we know how to handle because we have an advice from people. We have people praying for us. We have people that we listen to. We have people that we can encourage, be encouraged with, right? These are people because breakthroughs, the breakthroughs that God has for each and every one of us is going to be big. It's big. But the question is, is our character ready to handle those things? And one way to build character is to surround yourself with friends and godly relationship, you know, that are with the same heart for the Lord. I will tell who you are by the friends that you hang out with. I was in a wedding, and, and the father of uh, the, 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 the man said, the groom said, I am so thankful that I can see my son is going to be okay because of the company that he keeps. He said that. And so he was kind of, you know, so em quite emotional. But I will be, I know my son will be okay, that this union will be okay because of the company that he keeps. Because of the new life friends. Imagine many of his ninoks and ninangs are pastors. Really. Okay? But then again, in the breakthroughs that are going to come, are we ready to sustain it? And, the sus and how we sustain it is through relationship. True success in life in many ways depend on relationships. Okay? If your vision, you know, does not require the help of others, then your vision is small. But if your vision is big, you know it requires the help of others. Godly relationships. All kingdom realities are really realized and sustained through family. Right? Imagine the prayer of Jesus when Jesus taught the disciples, he said, Our Father. So it's through families, all kingdom realities, all kingdom movements that God wants to do in this, in this season in our lives is going to be through family. Anytime we leave the concept of family or relationship, we left the subject of the kingdom. We left the subject of the kingdom. If it is just you, it's going to be through in you, you alone, then there is no dependence. There is no connection. But God's desire is that we come together. You know what? I praise God for the people that God used. I remember yesterday we were speaking to, to two equals one. And the person that God used when we started, you know, many, many years ago was there. Pastor Paul Mata and Sister Vicky Mata. When we were, we had nothing. You know, when we were just uh, newly married, Mylene and I, even before we were married, they invested in us. They saw something in me. You know, if they saw something in me, I was kind of unsure of myself. I was, uh, I had inferiority complex. I, I didn't know really who I am and the plan that God has for me. But He called me one time. I thought I'm going to go to all-out architecture or I'm not going to be in ministry anymore because I need to take care of my lean. But he called me, and then he, he said, Giselle, I'm starting a ministry, a new ministry. Can you be my a, a church? Can you be my worship leader? And he's offering me a job. And so I said, that has been in my heart, Pastor Paul. So, oh yes, and the rest is history. The reason I am here today is because a couple believed in us. 
many, many, many years ago. And I give honor even to the Lord, but I thank those couple because that, that couple because they really believed in me and Mylene. There were times in our we as we were struggling, you know, as a church, there are times that even them they will not get salary as long as Mylene and I get something. Those were the pioneering days. All right? But they prioritized us, they loved on us. And the reason and, and I said to them. Where I am right now and the harvest that I'm getting is credited to your account because of the things that you have done for me and my family. Amen. Among you know that God will bring the right relationships to you. Amen. In your season, value them. Know them. Not all relationships are from God. That's why we need to be wise of the relationships that we have. Amen? We need to be wise of the relationships that God and see and discern the relationships that God has given to our lives. How will I know if this relationship is strategic? How will I know if, is this, if this uh, relationship is, is beneficial to me? Let me give you some points. First one, a relationship that thinks best of the other person. You know, this relationship thinks best of you. All right? This relationship adds to you. Yeah. It adds to you. You know, have you been in a relationship wherein those people just take and take and take? Wala. Wala sa inyong ganon, no? In those relationships, I feel like people just take and take. They abuse you. They just, they're there. You know what? Focus on themselves. All right? But in a godly relationship, the person comes there to add Imagine if that group comes there to goes to a, to a setting wherein they add, all of them want to add to one another. Of course, all of us have needs. But they know the source is God. They know that the people are not going to be their source. So they think of the best of the other person. In this relationship, it's not that if I am better, but how can I help you be better? Not bitter. But better. It is a place of encouragement, of comfort. It's a place of building up and exhortation. All right? Another point that you can see when you, if this is truly a godly relationship, a relationship that is marked by giving and not getting. You know, you will sense the Spirit. Aren't you, aren't you glad to be around people who are generous in their spirit? Yeah, where can you find them? In church. I pray. No, really, generous in spirit that they want to add to you. They want to they wanna give because Bible says the generous will prosper and those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. And so they understand that this relationship is an opportunity to give, to add. All right? And you know what? In the process as you sow, you're going to reap also. All right? But the idea, the focus is to build and to add to help you. That's why the people that I love, the people that I in constant communication with, I want to add, Mylene and I want to add to you. Want to add to you guys. Want to add to you. And in the process, our greatest desire is that your marriages get stronger. Our greatest desire is that your children walk in the things of God. Amen? Because people did that to us. It's not because of what we do that they love us, but because of who we are as a person. You know what? You're in a, in a spotlight like this. People love you because of what you do. But these people knew us before we had this. Amen. And so it's so important that you recognize those godly relationships. Amen. And a relationship that is based on Christ's love. It's based on Christ's love. Such relationship will last. For everything that is done in love will never fail. Amen. It's based on Christ's love. John 13, for 34 to 35. It says here, A new commandment I give to you, Jesus said, that you love one another as I have loved you. How do you love one another? Just as I have loved you. As we, He loves me, then the overflow that I have is what I give to others. The overflow that I have is what I give to others because I am love. And then the Father, I know I'm loved by God. And so because of that, I'm secure in His love. Then I can now 
in the midst of insecurities, in the midst of challenges, I can give and I can impart because I know I am loved by God. And because of this, you can sing this song, I love you, you love me. <laughs> We're a happy family with a great big hug. So, amen. <laughs> no, really, right? Because of His love for me, I can now begin to share. And then look at the effect. Look at the effect when we operate out of love that you also love one another. Is it there? It says, by this, all will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. By this, you will know if you are my disciples if you love one another. Well, Pastor Giselle, I have a question. If I keep on giving and giving and giving and people are not receiving, it's as if nothing, they're not receiving from me, is this the right relationship? Well, you know what? Your heart should be like this, and this is my heart. Make it a practice to serve everybody. But only pour your time and your heart into those who have a fire in their eyes when you begin to declare your purpose of your life. That when people get your heart, you pour your life to them. When you have a relationship that is as if nothing is happening, but you give and give and give, just continue to give, but pour your heart to those people who will love you. The moment you speak, that they hear you. That they hear you. They care for you. They care for your family. They care. They're so excited with the things that you carry in your heart. You have people like that. And God will bring the right people to you. Amen. So God can bring a couple, a, a group of friends together, and it's all good. It's all good. But what's so, so important that we see the value of relationships. Amen. He gives us grace to have quality and growing relationship. We believe it's not automatic, but it's a process. We grow through this. We grow through the process. And God is the one who's going to build people up. Amen. Remember last week, we talked about waiting. And that word wait in Isaiah 40 talks about God adding to us. Right? And I used the analogy of the rope. The strands are being intertwined as God is intertwining with us. God will use also godly relationship to strengthen us. Amen. To strengthen us. God sends us people the, the right relationships that are going to be intertwined in our lives. People who will stand with us in the fight. People who will carry your burdens and weep with you in your sorrows. These are people God is going to send your way to add strength to you. Amen? So that you will not fight alone. That you will be together. That you will not do life alone. Pastor Paul, can you come? So we'll demonstrate. We'll demonstrate this as we are talking about being added. All right. Okay. Can you do the knot? We have two ropes, so maybe, for example, this is my rope, this is who I am, and Pastor Paul's rope is there. He is that. And what God does, and He knots us together for a purpose. And this kind of rope, what is the name of this rope? Uh, barrel knot. This is a knot that you use to join two ropes together. I mean, it's uh, short, and this uh, kind of knot is able to carry heavy load. This is kind of knot that carries heavy load. So you were meant to carry it together. And so what happens? So it's a strong knot. If you, it's a very strong knot. So this is what God does to each and every one of us as we wait on the Lord and allow God to bring the right relationship to us. Among you have people like that. And this is for life. You know, we have friends we're in. We don't see them often, but when we see each other, we know there is a connection. Right? I pray that you have friends like that. Pastor Paul, can you pull this? Okay, together. Look at that. Strong. Strong. Okay, kain dalawa. Come on, pull it. Come on, everybody. Among you for Pastor Paul. Among you for Joey. Come on, pull. Yeah, pull, pull it. See the knot? It's so strong. 
even though if the devil pulls you on one side, somebody's going to pull you in the other side. Whatever analogy. Thank you, guys. This is amazing. Guys, message today is simple. Don't do life alone. Be connected. And I believe as we carry the love of God, allow God to change us, we in ourselves can help other people too. Be a, be a conduit, be an instrument of His blessing to the people around us. I believe through this life group, here in this church, all of us can be connected and we can make a big difference. Amen? Amen.